Hi, everyone. Welcome to LA Rams Central. This is the 45th episode, uh, five away from 50, which I'm pretty excited about. Um, covering the week two preseason game. Uh, pretty excited about this one coming up, playing the Raiders in Oakland. The Rams have a really nice setup. Uh, the Rams only leave California twice, and that's once in Green Bay in week four of the preseason, and then once at Dallas in week four. So for the first eight weeks of the season, the four preseason games and the first four regular season games, they've got a pretty nice little uh, pretty nice little deal there. They're, they're, they were home against Dallas, of course, in last week's 13-10 win. That was a big one. Um, and then big for preseason. Of course, the reason I say big isn't because it means anything. It's just nice to beat Dallas and stick it up the, the derriere of the NFL network and those that worship at the altar of the Dallas Cowboys. Plus, we get a good look at Dallas before we play them this year, which I know we'll probably be playing Dallas pretty annually in the preseason. But um, And it was nice to shut up Des Bryant on the whole Dallas is Southern California's football team. I want to smack him in the face when I heard that, but I digress. At any rate, the important thing is that the Rams did get the win. The important thing is that the Rams did just kind of get a win to get some positive mojo uh, behind everything else. And I think the important thing to keep in mind, too, for you guys out there, the big factor for me was Jared Goff only playing two snaps. Um, when Aaron Rodgers does that, it's expected he's the starting quarterback. That's what you know, 32 teams do when they have their clear starter and then they're, they want to see what the backup has. Of course, when you listen to the experts, they want to see more Jared Goff because they just don't know what the guy's capable of. Well, I got news for you. Um, insert name here. The Rams don't care what you want to see. The Rams know what they have in Jared Goff. They're pretty confident that Murray wouldn't have only played two series against the Dallas Cowboys. Now, he'll probably play a quarter maybe a quarter and a half. I expect the starters this week will only play a quarter um, this week. <clears throat> and then the third preseason game is the the one where all the starters play uh, three quarters of the game to kind of get a feel for the football team and see what's going on. Then, of course, you can expect nothing in the fourth preseason game. If the Rams are smart, they're going to have some guys not even fly to Green Bay, and that'll take away some of that air, you know, some of that mileage fatigue away from them. Um, if I were the Rams head coach, Goff, Gurley, Watkins, Donald, Quinn, Ogletree, Joyner, um, Williams, Alexander, sorry, Alexander, Maurice Alexander. Um, try to think of two other guys here that was off the top of my head. Um, Whitworth and Sullivan wouldn't travel. There's no point. Um, let them have the week off and get ready for, for week one of the preseason against Indy uh, in L.A. So I'm excited to see how this unfolds. Um, it's been kind of a it's been kind of a crazy, um, crazy week listening to these people talk. And everybody's upset that Jared Goff didn't get a lot of snaps. Um, but. I'll tell you three things that I liked about the first preseason game from Jared Goff. The throw that he made to Robert Woods, that was the kind of throw that we're used to seeing other teams make against us. Now we've got to hold on to the ball and see, guys, I said Robert Woods. I didn't call him Brooks finally. Um, I don't know why I do that. It's a mental block for some reason. I just revert back to the early 90s, I guess. Um, anyway, Robert Woods did a good job of – of catching the ball, but then he didn't hold on to it. And, of course, Cooper Cup kind of got in there. So I am curious, though, about this preseason game, kind of what we're going to see. I'm still wanting to see Nelson Spruce. I'm kind of going in with the same mentality that I had before. But a couple people have changed for me. Um, I want to see if Cooper Cup can continue because he looked, he looked okay. He looked good at times, but he looked okay overall um, in the game against Dallas. Obviously, had the big touchdown fumble recovery. Um, Nelson Spruce had a lot of catches, but not for a lot of yards. Tyler Higby was hardly targeted. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking to see Jared Goff, Nelson Spruce, 
I'm still looking at Cooper Cup, but I'm going to add in there. Um, I'm going to add into that mix Tyler Higby because I just didn't see enough of Tyler Higby. And I will tell you, the running game concerns me. Um, Jerome Brown is a better option than Greg Robinson, but that's kind of like saying, you know, a corpse or a living person. You're dating a living person, not a corpse. Yeah, the living person's preferable, but that doesn't mean they're good. Doesn't mean they're a right fit. He's been a career backup for a reason. Now, Greg Robinson was a non-factor. Brown at least may have some potential to be something more than a non-factor, but it's one preseason game too, and it was against a really good Dallas football team, and their front seven were largely intact. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sit here and 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 be overly concerned about it, but it's definitely something I'm looking for against Oakland because if we could show life in the running game against Oakland in the first quarter, uh, we will see. Not that's a nice thing too about playing Dallas and Oakland is you get two good football teams um, right off the bat and then you get the Chargers, um, so you kind of have an opportunity to really see what you got. And I'm excited to see what the Rams do tonight against the Raiders because if they can run the ball against the Raiders, they're not going to have a problem running the football against a depleted Seattle Seahawks football team, an aging Arizona Cardinals football team with no Calais Campbell, a sorry 49er team. So you know that's at least six games right there Todd Gurley's going to have a good day in, um, which will help Jared Goff. And then you kind of look at the rest of the schedule and go, Green Bay wasn't – or Indy wasn't strong against the run last year. Um, Minnesota is hot and cold depending on what team shows up. So – You've got some opportunities there, but we'll have to wait and see. And then, of course, you have the biggest reason why I want to do a show um, before the Raider game. This kid Davis that we have that kept fumbling the ball, I'm really curious to see what he does tonight because the kid has flash. I mean, he shows up on the film. I mean, you watch him play and you're like, wow, he's explosive. Better than anything I've seen in a Ram uniform in a long, long time. I'm not saying he reminds me of Eric Dickerson, but he definitely reminds me of an Amp Lee um, when we got him from Minnesota. He explodes. He pops. Now, obviously, the fumbling is a problem. He cannot continue to put the ball on the ground, and he's got to pick up blocks. If he can't do those things, then he'll just be a preseason hot shot and go out the window. So I'm curious to see how he bounces back. If he, I'm curious to see how he bounces back this week. If he runs cautious, if he runs scared, or if he runs with reckless abandon like he did against Dallas, because that kid was blowing it up last week against the Dallas twos and threes. So I'd be curious to see what he does against the Raider twos and threes, um, and see if this kid is. Something worth keeping an eye out. And then, that's pretty much all I could think of. I mean, I, I'm curious to see what you guys are going to be looking for here. Not a lot of analysis that I'm going to give in a preseason game. Um, we didn't get injured. Uh, guys seem to stay relatively healthy. Uh, we'll get a good look at Watkins tonight. Um, probably going to see him for a series, maybe two. I don't think we'll see him for the whole first quarter. Uh, I certainly wouldn't if I was the Rams. I'd, I'd ease into it. But outside of Watkins, um, you know, it's pretty much the same playbook that it was going into week one. we got to see what these kids can do. Uh, for all those people that want to see Jared Goff, they're about to see him. Now, I'll tell you, what I'm looking for from Jared Goff is third down conversions. Um, if the guy drops the ball, I'm not putting that on Jared. If the guy, if he puts it where it's supposed to be and we don't catch it, then we could critique the receivers. But does he get the ball out where he needs to, putting us in a position to extend the drive? That's what we need. We have a running game. We have a defense. We need a quarterback that's accurate. 
who could convert third downs and is a threat on the deep ball when called upon. Uh, and I think Jared Goff are all, is all of those things, but time will tell. So um, I'm curious to see what you guys think. Uh, I know a lot of people are, you know, taking Cooper Cup over Nelson Spruce, and, and I don't I don't have a problem with Cooper Cup. I like Cooper Cup, but Nelson showed something last year when no one else on the field did, and to ignore that um, and just assume that all these guys coming in are better uh, is foolish. The, the the kid is a is a catching machine. He's got really good hands. Like I said, he reminds me of Steve Largent. He's got sticky fingers, um, and he makes plays. So you know you want that from your from your wide receivers, and, and I like to think the Rams are going to invest in him and keep him, but. Um, He's got to show more than well, – I think he had like five catches for 25 yards. I mean that's five yards of reception. That's not enough for a wide receiver. You need to at least be in the eight or nine range. So we'll see what happens. But I'm excited for this preseason game. I hope you guys are. I have three questions that I want you guys to answer this week. One, um, what you want me to talk about next week for the third preseason game. Two, what player or players are you most excited to see tonight, knowing the starters are only going to get a quarter? Um, and thirdly, um, ways that I can expand uh, the subscriptions because I'm stuck at 854. I've been between 850 and 860 for about two and a half, three months now. So I'd like to up those numbers if I can. Uh, I think more people need to have an alternative voice when it comes to listening to Ram um, analysis. I don't feel like this has been my best show, but it is certainly one of my briefest. And I just wanted to make sure I got a show out there to kind of tell you guys what I'm looking for. Um, I'm looking for Goff to have a decent day, maybe around 50 to 100 yards passing, a touchdown. Uh, if he can get that in the first quarter, I'm going to feel pretty good. It's I'm really excited to see what he does with the rush coming in. Uh, you keep in mind, guys, no matter how well he plays tonight, they're only going to talk about the things he did wrong, and they're going to point out the fact that he's not ready for prime time because they're sold on that narrative now on Jared Goff. And when you say things like, we need to see Jared Goff for more than a series to know what Jared Goff's all about, when the head football coach put him in there for only eight plays – he knows what the kid's all about and doesn't want to injure him. You've got a problem because once the media latches on to something, they're like leeches. They suck it dry and then move on to the next thing. Um, and in an athlete's case, they ruin athletes' careers. And they have no problem doing it. And they have no problem extending athletes' careers that have no business being extended. I won't mention any names, Colin Kaepernick, who should still never, ever be in the news because I'll be honest with you, I don't think there's been a worse quarterback in modern history than Colin Kaepernick. I put him right up there in the same category as Trent Dilfer. And yes, you Colin Kaepernick freaks out there that still want to bang the drum for Colin Kaepernick. Unlike Colin Kaepernick, Trent Dilfer won a Super Bowl. But I'm not going to sit here and say Trent Dilfer was a great quarterback. I'm not going to sit here and say Trent Dilfer was a good quarterback. I'm not going to sit here and say he was a bad quarterback. I'm telling you that Trent Dilfer was an awful, terrible, pathetic quarterback and Colin Kaepernick is in the same class but Jared Goff in seven games apparently you know three years worth of work from Colin Kaepernick isn't enough to determine but seven games you're ready to chime it in and go yep kid ain't ready remember my show on him before I'll continue to fight for him until I know more and I'm not going to know this year and I'll tell you why even if we make the playoffs and Jared Goff throws for 3,500 yards I'm not going to sit here week one of the preseason next year and go, we know everything we need to know about Jared Goff. It takes three full seasons. He's got a new offensive coordinator this year, a new head coach, and a whole new system. So this is the third system that he would have learned in three straight years. Cal system, then the Rams, and now McVay's. So... I look at this and go, if he has a great year, great. If he has a down year, I'm not going to worry about it. Let's see what he does year two in the same system. Hopefully with some confidence from 2017. 
and 2018 will tell us what we need to know. But I'm not going to sit here and claim victory if he has a great year, and I'm not going to sit here and condemn the kid if he has another down year. It takes three full seasons. And realistically, if you want to be fair, you should give him four because he should have three years in the same system before you chalk him up as no good. But in today's football, you got to pick up on systems quicker than that. Now, this isn't the 80s where they can groom you and build around you and give you that kind of time. you got to learn systems pretty quick in today's football, and that I agree with these experts today. Um, they're right in the respect that you've got to pick up systems. That's a part of what they call football IQ. If you're able to pick up the offense quickly, then you, you, you're testing in an area that is highly sought after by coaches and your teammates. So we'll see. Week two coming up, preseason. No injuries, and let's see what these kids can do, and let's see what the veterans can do. But more importantly, let's see how ready for prime time the Rams starters really are because the first quarter against the Raiders, if we're even or if we're beating them, I'm very, very happy because that's going to tell us a lot about our team. That's it for LA Rams Central. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. The three things, what you guys want me to talk about next week, who you're most looking forward to watching this week can be multiple players, and ways to expand the um, subscriptions. That's what I'm looking for. Um, quick shout out once again to LT from um, Combat Sports LA, I think is the name of the show. Um, and from Anthony Mana to you, Keep up the good work. You got a really good show there, and I'm glad people can kind of have uh, alternatives. This is just straight football talk for me. It's what I know. It's what I stick with. Um, but you know, I'll occasionally I watch other sports. I just I know where my limitations are, and I'm not going to be criticizing other people about the job and performance they do, and then turn around and do a sport that I don't know a lot about and come across as the same type. So um, that's not how I roll. And that's not what I'm going to do. So, again, on behalf of LA Rams Central, this is Anthony Mana. Have a great day, and thanks for watching.